Hello my friends, I'm Dr. Bree, and today we're going to do some pelvic floor exercises. In fact, my top five favorite pelvic floor exercises that involve much more than just kegels. So let's go ahead and begin to integrate the pelvic floor into full body moves. And you won't need anything for this workout except a yoga mat. Now I do recommend having a chair handy for one of the moves. And if you happen to have a towel that you can roll up, a bath towel, a little kitchen towel, dish towel, something like that, that you can roll up like this, or you can also use a firm book for one of the moves, that would be great. So just grab those things, get them ready, and then let's go ahead and go on to these great pelvic floor strengtheners. If you are dealing with prolapse or bladder leakage and are looking for a program that you can do at home, check out Lift. You can get the first week free by heading to femfusionfitness.com slash lift. Start your healing journey today. All right, so for our first move, I want to actually let you know that the pelvic floor and pelvic floor strength begins at our feet. That might sound crazy, but it's true, trust me. So let's go ahead and begin by just finding a nice position where your feet are not super wide, they're not super close, they're just right under your hips and make sure your feet are pointed straight ahead. Now in this position, try lifting your toes up off the floor and feel how that really activates your inner arch. So you can feel the bottom of your feet kind of turn on and get active and you can feel really rooted through the corners of your feet too. So turn on that arch, lift up those toes and now set the toes down but try to feel as if you're spreading them nice and wide as you set them down. So often we lived our, live our days in shoes that make our toes kind of cramp up and be really narrow and that's not optimal for our feet. So let's do it again. Lift the toes up off the ground, activate those inner arches, lift, lift, lift those toes. You'll feel this all the way up the chain of your legs. You might even feel it in your pelvic floor. And now set the toes down nice and wide. Ooh, it should feel pretty good. Now, in this position, I want you to just relax, find nice tall alignment, make sure that your rib cage is lifting up off your pelvis, you're not like this, and you're not like this. You're nice and tall and lifted. And I want you to just breathe. We're gonna establish the breathing connection that we're gonna use throughout our whole workout. And I'm not gonna spend too long talking about this, but just quickly, Rather than breathing up here in your chest and shoulders and neck as you breathe in and out, we're gonna bring it down. So inhale, expand into your ribs, into your belly, into your pelvic floor, and exhale, feel the lift of your pelvic floor and the gentle pulling in of your abs as you breathe out. So inhale and expand, and exhale, feel the pelvic floor lift. I'm gonna use my hands a little bit and I want you to do the same. Inhale and expand, nice and big, all the way around. And then exhale, feel your pelvic floor lift up like a fountain coming up out into the sky. And then inhale one more time, expand. And exhale, feel that pelvic floor fountain lifting upward. Okay, that breath connection is gonna be something we're gonna use in everything today. So shake it all out, let it go. If you felt like that was a lot of activation, you're right, it was. <laughs> it's a really great first step. So now find that activation again without going through everything we just did. Great active feet, you're grounded and strong. And I want you now to sit back into a teeny weeny little squat, it's nothing big, but I want you to feel your butt bones, your sitting bones, Feel as you move into this tiny little squat that you're actually feeling your butt bones protrude out into your hands. Feel them coming out into your hands. And now exhale as you stand up and feel how those sitting bones kind of come together. So inhaling down, feeling the sitting bones spreading apart and pressing into your hands. And then exhale, feel the sitting bones coming together. Now keep going, inhaling as you come down and exhaling as you come up. And I want you to feel that pelvic floor between your sitting bones. Feel it release as you come down and then contract and lift as you stand up. So inhaling, releasing down, pelvic floor releases, sitting bones draw apart. That was inhale. And then exhale, feel the sitting bones come together and the pelvic floor gently contract and lift up. So inhale, pelvic floor releases down sitting bones spread apart, exhale, 
sitting bones together and pelvic floor lifts up like that fountain. Keep going, inhale and exhale. So this, keep going, it's really, it's basically like a kegel, sort of, but we're doing so much more than just activating and releasing the pelvic floor muscles. We're also using the hips, all of these other muscles that are nearby the pelvic floor. We're working all of the muscles and the, the fascia, all of the connective tissues in this area. It's all working together, even with the breathing diaphragm. And I wanna show you on my pelvis model what's going on. So keep going, keep going. This is your pelvic floor. Those are your pelvic floor muscles inside your pelvis. And this is the front, and this is the back, and these are your sitting bones here and here. And look at all of the pelvic floor muscles that are stretching between the back and the front, and then the sitting bones side to side. So we have the outer layer of pelvic floor muscles and then the inner layer as well. There's a lot going on between the sitting bones. So that's why you're feeling when you, when you squat down a little bit, your sitting bones are actually widening apart just a little not much, and the muscles are stretching. When you stand up and straighten your legs, the sitting bones are coming together just a little bit, tiny movement, and the pelvic floor muscles are activating as well. So finish up, just do one more, inhaling and exhaling, and then let it go. Now, we're gonna feel a very similar move, so this is just kind of a spin on that first move. Very similar, but I want you to focus more on feeling one side of the pelvic floor versus the other side. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna put one hand on the pubic bone and one hand on the sitting bone on one side. And then we'll do the other side. So let's go ahead and do that now. One hand on the pubic bone, my left hand is now on my left sitting bone. So I want you to do that same exact move. And I want you to feel, just bring your awareness and attention to the left side of the pelvic floor and feel your sitting bone draw away from your pubic bone. Also feel your tailbone draw away from your pubic bone. And now as you stand up, feel your sitting bone draw toward your pubic bone and your tailbone draw toward your pubic bone as well. So right now, as we squat down, the sitting bone and the tailbone draw away from the pubic bone, releasing and stretching that left side. Now exhale, feel the sitting bone and the tailbone draw toward the pubic bone, contracting and really bringing your focus to this left side of your pelvic floor. Let's just do two more. Coming down, feeling the sitting bone draw away and the tailbone draw away and then exhale, feel the sitting bone draw toward the pubic bone and the tailbone draw toward the pubic bone. Everything's lifting and last time. Now, stand just on that same side you worked. So for me, it was my left side. Stand on that leg and see how you feel. Do you feel solid, rooted? Try standing on your right leg now. Does it feel any different? Maybe a little more wobbly on that leg that you weren't working that specific side? Go back and forth again and just see. Maybe there's a little difference. We didn't work that one side for too long, so you might not feel a big difference, but even just with that little amount of focused work on our left side, you might feel a little more stable on the left, left leg. So now let's go ahead and even things out and do the other side. So right hand or left hand for me on my pubic bone, right hand on my right sitting bone. So right there, can feel it. Now, here we go. We are coming down feeling the right sitting bone now draw away, the tailbone reaching away from the pubic bone, pelvic floor muscles are stretching, and then exhale, come up to stand. Right sitting bone draws toward the pubic bone, tailbone draws toward the pubic bone, the right side of the pelvic floor, you're really focused on it and feeling it activate. Releasing right now and then activating. Releasing and activating. Focus your awareness on the right side of the pelvic floor. Let's just do one or two more, just try to be even. 
Again, this is really an awareness exercise. You're embodying the feeling of the right side of your pelvic floor as you release the pelvic floor muscles, as you squat down, and then exhale, come up to stand, feel them contract and lift on that right side. Now let's remeasure. How do we feel? Do we feel more stable and grounded on that side we just worked? I do. So we should feel pretty even now. And now let it go. <sighs> Make sure that you're completely released and relaxed. You're not clenching or holding anything. And let's go ahead into our next move. Okay, for the next move, I actually want you to have that chair, if you, if you have a chair available, hopefully you do, because it really does make this next move easier. So you're gonna grab a chair and make sure your core is nice and strong if you have to move it. And you're going to place your towel, or you can use a book, something very firm and steady, place it on one side. And what you're going to do is you're going to be sitting on one side, your sitting, sitting bone on one side is going to be on the rolled up towel or the book. And the other side is actually going to be free to kind of release down. And you're going to try to use your hip and your pelvic floor muscles to lift it back up to step to level. So drop down and then use your pelvic floor and your hip muscles and core muscles to lift it back up. Now the thing is that everything in your core and your pelvic floor, it's all connected. And so even though you're gonna be working more than just your pelvic floor with this move, you're definitely gonna be working the pelvic floor which is at the center of the entire thing. So let's go ahead and do it. Sitting on my sitting bone is, is on the towel, so my sitting bone on the left side for me is raised up a little bit. Now the right sitting bone, I'm letting it just come down. Now I'm gonna exhale and bring my attention and my awareness, my focus to the feeling of those inside pelvic floor muscles lifting the sitting bone up and then releasing it down. And lifting it up, using the exhale is really helpful and releasing it down. So sure, my butt muscles are coming in there too. You know, it's more than just my pelvic floor, but the pelvic floor is definitely feeling it. Now, let's just do a couple more. Release down and then come up. And I wanna let you know that these moves, this move and the previous move was, is from Eric Franklin. He's one of my teachers, somebody that I study under. He has books and courses that are amazing. So I did not make these moves up. They're from Eric Franklin of the Franklin Method. So now, just feel into any difference you notice between the two sides. For me, I definitely feel like that side that was lifting up and down, I feel that it's a little more tired. It was definitely working. It feels a little lower in my seat. It feels more grounded. So let's go ahead and switch sides. So same thing, other side. So now I just have the towel roll on the other side and my pelvis will sit up on it. So my right sitting bone now is on this towel roll and I'm just letting my left side sink down. Now I'm gonna use my breath and lift the pelvic floor up and then release it down. Now you might notice a difference between the two sides. I do, for me, my left pelvic floor muscles, I happen to know are weaker than my right. So I feel like my hip flexors are getting more involved. I feel like I'm kind of having to use my thigh muscles a little bit on this side. If you notice that difference too, you're normal. <laughs> a lot of people are different between the two sides. It just means you need to work a little bit more on this balance, on finding balance between the two sides. All is not lost, just requires more practice. So lowering the sitting bone and then using the pelvic floor muscles and the other muscles too to lift back up to even. A couple more times, lower that one sitting bone down and then use the pelvic floor, lift it up, try to make everything level and release. Finish up, even up, exhaling as you lift that sitting bone and then letting it go. So, Sit on your sitting bones nice and evenly. And I just wanna show you one more time all that was working. Here's your pelvis. These are your sitting bones. 
Look at all that was working just there. It's a lot. You were really doing a lot of work just there. So that's wonderful. This is the inside. All right, let's go ahead now and move on to our next move, which is gonna be on your hands and knees. Okay, this is sort of a transitional move. It's not necessarily a full exercise, but you're gonna be on your hands and knees. And I really want you to feel after all of that work of our pelvic floor muscles, feel your sitting bones drawing apart and shining like two headlights back behind you, totally releasing and relaxing your pelvic floor. And in this position, let's just do tiny little cat and cows, but not a full cat and cow from yoga. You don't need to move your whole back. I'd like you to just isolate it more to your lumbar spine and that, that pelvic area. So let's make them tiny little lumbar cat and cows. So lift your pelvic, uh, your sitting bones up toward the ceiling on the inhale, and then on the exhale, just draw your sitting bones together, contracting your pelvic floor and pulling in and up. Now release the sitting bones back, let the pelvic floor relax, and then exhale, pull the sitting bones together, Contract that pelvic floor, squeezing and lifting. And again, release the sitting bones back. Totally let go, maybe even rock your hips side to side. And then exhale, sitting bones gently draw together, pelvic floor squeezes and lifts. Now let's release it all and just do some little tiny hip circles, which are one of my favorite moves. Just feel like you're drawing a circle on the wall behind you and go the other way now, reversing. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is widen our knees apart, and we're gonna sit and explore the pelvic floor in this position right here, which I find to be incredibly helpful. Even if you have prolapse, you can feel safe and comfortable in this position because look at how much my pelvis is tilted forward. Now in this position, you've got a lot of bony support for your pelvic organs. So you don't need to worry about everything, you know, about a lack of support. You've got a lot of bony support from your actual bony pelvis when you're really tipped forward in this position. Now, if this is too much for your knees, you can also do this sitting up in a chair and I'll show a little inset video of what that would look like. But if you're okay in this position, I want you to bring your hands in front of you. They can be fists or on your flat hands. And I want you just to feel into your pelvic floor muscles themselves. We know what they look like now. So feel into that area, the bottom of your pelvic bowl. This is it from the outside. And I want you to feel into this area. Feel as if you're drawing your, your tailbone right here. <laughs> This is the back, so feel as if you're drawing this tailbone toward your pubic bone in the front. So let's go ahead and do that. Feel as if you're using that back wall of pelvic floor muscles to draw that tailbone toward your pubic bone and then release the tailbone back, like you're fanning it back. Then draw that tailbone forward toward your pubic bone Use the back wall of pelvic floor muscles and then release that tailbone back. Let it fan and flip back like a whale tail. Again, if you want to exhale as you draw that tailbone forward toward your pubic bone, you can do that and then release it back. And let's just do one more. So exhale, or you can do it on the inhale. You don't have to get married to, you know, to doing it with the exhale, although it is helpful because the way the pelvic floor activates, it activates really nicely as you exhale because it plays well together with the breathing diaphragm. But don't get too caught up in that. Just focus on exploring the sensations of contracting the pelvic floor, tailbone toward your pubic bone, and then releasing it back. All right, we're going to come on to our sitting bones and simply gonna place your feet out in front of you. And I want you to keep your spine long, so try not to round and hunch like this. I want you to keep your spine nice and tall and lifted. And what we're gonna do is actually begin just by sitting in this position and you can bring your toes toward each other and then out. So just begin with rotating inward 
and then outward. And this is very, very subtle what I'm about to tell you, but I want you to feel in and see if you can feel that as your toes rotate inward and your whole thigh and, and femurs rotate inward, your sitting bones draw apart and out. Your sitting bones, they're actually drawing apart and stretching your pelvic floor. Now, as your heels draw together and your toes go out, you can feel your sitting bones coming together and your pelvic floor contracts and lifts. So let's go ahead and feel that again. So sitting bones are drawing apart and then heels together, toes out. You can feel that your sitting bones are more closer together and your pelvic floor is contracting. All right, let's take this into an exercise. We're just gonna go one leg at a time. We're gonna drag the foot along the floor. So inhale, your toes point in and your heel leads the way. Inhale, and then exhale. Feel the inner thigh muscles working, the pelvic floor is lifting, your toes are pointed out. So inhale, toes are in, and your leg draws out to the side. Inhaling, inhaling. Now point the toes outward and exhale, exhale, exhale. Feel the inner thighs activate and the pelvic floor lift. Now, toes point in, heel out. We inhale out to the side. Pelvic floor releases and then exhale. You're feeling the pelvic floor muscles Engage, the inner thigh muscles activate, your toes are out, and your heel is in. I'm gonna just do that one more time. So toes in, heels out. Inhaling, and exhaling. Oh, one more time for good measure. So inhaling, and exhaling. This is surprisingly a lot of work. So just shake out the legs, maybe flop your knees apart. And that was activating all sorts of muscles that help to support and activate the pelvic floor. So your inner thighs, your hip rotators, you know, your, your glutes were maybe sort of active, but yeah, we have all sorts going on here. Plus our abdominals, our back muscles, your whole body is active, but your pelvic floor is in the center of it all. So let's go ahead and do the other side. And we're simply going to make sure you're sitting up nice and tall. And toes in, we inhale, I'm gonna just turn a little bit. We inhale, and then toes are out now on this moving leg. Heel draws in, exhale. Toes point in, inhale, drag it out to the side. And toes point out, we exhale. The heel leads the way. You feel the inner thigh firing up, center line activating, pelvic floor lifting. Inhale out to the side. Toes are in, heel is out. Now exhale, heel leads the way. Heel in, toes out. Inner thigh is active, pelvic floor lifts. Inhaling. And exhaling, <sighs> lifting the pelvic floor, pulling in the low abs, nice and strong. Couple more times, inhaling. And exhaling. Inhaling. And exhaling. Great job. All right, let the knees flop apart again. And who knew there was all of these interesting ways to work your pelvic floor muscles, right? If you want more of these interesting ways to work your pelvic floor muscles and to integrate pelvic floor work into full body movements and activities of daily life, like how you lift, how you sit to stand, all of these transitions and ways that we move, then please don't miss my lift program. It's perfect for women with bladder leakage, and prolapse and women who want to strengthen their pelvic floor to feel more confident and strong and toned through their core. It's a great program. You can check the video notes for all of the information. 
But right now, let's go ahead and lie down on our back and just relax. So I'm gonna grab yoga blocks and we're gonna come down onto the side and just end. It's really important after all of that hard work, it's really important to release and relax the pelvic floor. So go ahead and just let the knees drop apart. This is one simple way to do it, is to relax into this butterfly supported, butterfly stretch or supported a Supta Baddha Konasana reclined bound angle pose. Or you can come into frog stretch, which many people who work with me love this stretch. We hold on to our shins or our ankles with our hands and just let the knees flop apart. Take some deep breaths into your pelvic floor. Totally relax and let go. And if today's exercises felt hard for you or kind of hard to understand, just know that if you practice, you're gonna get the hang of it. So keep practicing. And let's end just by stirring the pot. So bring the knees together and apart and together and apart, together and down, and big, long pencil stretch. Shake it all out. Nice job. Roll onto your side, press up to seated, and thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful for you, please leave a comment and tell me your favorite move that was new to you. And definitely, again, check the video notes for ways that we can work together and for more information about stuff that you saw in today's video. So until next time, remember, eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter. I will see you later. Have a great day.